Hi, everybody. So the idea is to it's um, it's new. It's a new format. It's to do um, a live presentation or live uh, to answer to questions and to uh, share with you new thoughts and um, and information about electroculture. So my uh, my uh, subject where I'm passionate about uh, to share with you is electroculture. So a lot of people know me already from my work on internet, uh, through my internet sites and through and through uh, my videos on YouTube that are mostly in French uh, until now. But um, uh, I'm making more and more videos in English. I promise you, uh, because uh, you are you are really many many to ask me questions in English, and that's also why I decided to make uh, videos in English and to make a life. In uh, 2019, I, I did like uh, more than uh, I don't know how much, but maybe 50 lives uh, in 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 French, and so now I will uh, go through all that information. In, uh, in English, so it's a lot, a lot of information. Uh, you see here in my back all books, uh, it's uh, a lot of books, all uh, about electroculture. Uh, it's uh, really, and uh, this is only a piece because uh, there, there, there's a lot to, to say about all those techniques. We are really in the beginning of a new era, of a new, um, uh, really a, a, a kind of, uh, maybe we can tell about a kind of revolution in agriculture. Uh, because um, electroculture was uh, lost, uh, was uh, f f forgotten uh, until I came uh, mostly in, uh, in um, 2008 and even before, uh, uh, nobody was talking about electroculture. And now, uh, uh, my aim was to to put it again in the um, in the uh, in the in the actuality and uh, and uh, now uh, more and more people um, know about it or discover electroculture that they didn't know it exists because nowhere we learn about that uh, in in uh, there is no agricultural institution or university or school that is talking about electroculture today. Um, maybe I'm not completely right because there are some. For example, in Smolensk in Russia, uh, there was a professor that was talking about electroculture techniques. But there are so less that it's almost unknown. Uh, it's a uh, in our Western world, almost nobody talk about. If you ask to a professor about agriculture, uh, a professor in agriculture in the most famous universities in the world, uh, you ask about electroculture and the influence of electricity on plant growth. Most of them, they don't know about. They will say you. They will respond. They will answer. Oh, I don't know. Sorry. Uh, I will inform myself about that, uh, I don't know. Or uh, sometimes they have uh, so big ego and so big um, uh, uh, pretension, or I don't know the real word in, in English, uh, but uh, they, they have so a big ego that they will say, oh, it's nonsense, but it's just because they don't know anything, so they, they, will, they, they will try to to say bad about it because they just uh, don't can accept that they don't know. And so, oh, thank you. I, I'm reading your, your comments. Um, so I'm using a uh, Restream uh, uh, Studio and normally it's uh, on live and on Facebook and also on YouTube. So normally I see all your comments from the two platforms, but I'm not completely sure. It's a test also uh, this evening uh, to make sure everything is working well. So sorry if there are some problems uh, um, through the live. We will see. But if everything goes all right, we will continue to do that. 
uh, uh, over the weeks. I will uh, uh, fix uh, if there are any problems. I will fix them, and so we will. Uh, so the lives will be better and better naturally. Oh, the, I, I'm reading a uh, Patty. You are writing a whole text. Try to to put uh, little uh, questions. Um, and uh, and the comments because otherwise I need to take uh, much time to read your questions and uh, uh, not everybody would like that. So, so social comments display here. Okay, thank you for all the great contents. Thank you, middle way. Um, so it would be nice for me to know from where you uh, from where are you from the US from Australia from Indonesia from from Africa somewhere, from South America somewhere, or from Canada, uh, from England. So uh, it, it would be really nice for me uh, uh, to see that uh, electroculture is is uh, is going, is spreading itself all over the world, and and to see uh, from where are you. And, and I, I'm really very proud about that. Uh, that I'm. Uh, like a pioneer that that makes this uh, known all over the world. Uh, that's why also I want to develop uh, more content in multiple languages, like uh, English. I speak a little bit English uh, enough to explain new things. So uh, uh, over the the years, I, I will improve my English and and have more vocabulary. So I will be able to explain you a lot more. But also in Germany, electroculture is developing a lot, and in Italy also, and in Spain also. Uh, so in France, that's where I began uh, 20 years ago. It was my whole beginning was in 1998. So I'm already 46 years old, I think, from uh, 76. Uh, so uh, uh, from 1976. Uh, so. I began in uh, uh, when I, I was, uh, I will present myself a little bit for those that don't know me. So I, I, I was student in the 90s. Uh, I did uh, uh, studies about engineering and agriculture and biotechnology. Um, and um, and uh, uh, I was uh, shocked about all the industrial ways of doing agriculture. Like, like we, we 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 had no respect for the life energy for for the life of the the living beings from their their consciousness and their their energy and uh, it's like we were we 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 are treating nature and we were treating plants and animals like objects like uh, like uh, um, a, a product that we have to multiply like in an enterprise like in a manufacturing enterprise and and that uh, sh shocked me and so i i because i grew up in a little farm where every cow has his first name where uh, we we had like a relation with uh, nature all around with, with the plants uh, not so much the plants in that moment, but uh, uh, more the animals. And uh, but the plants, um, I, I felt already. I, I liked very much the plant garden to make it beautiful, to make it nice. And um, <clears throat> and then when I did studies of engineering, it was like they were all objects to multiply, just to make money. Uh, that that disturbs me. And then I, I was looking for books, for information, for alternative techniques of agriculture. And then I found one book that maybe you know, a lot of people know already. It's that book that, that you find also, uh, I will show you uh, here in English. I have it in English too. Uh, that's in English. The Secrets of the Soil. New solutions for restoring our planet, and this was a real revelation from uh, Peter Tompkins and Christopher Bird. And really, I advise you really that book. It's really uh, uh, they they write it also another book that is um, the secrets of the plants. Uh, also, that was their previous book, and then the secrets of the soil. 
And in that book, I discovered uh, a whole chapter about the influence of music on planet gold. And that uh, make uh, me thinking, wow, that's really interesting. And uh, and also a whole chapter about uh, the Irish round towers, like like those ones, and uh, how to how they radiate energy all around that make plants growing, and uh, and uh, from the work of Phil Callahan, that is also uh, known in in US a little bit, but really a genius too, and um, and so. Uh, uh, there, there were a lot of different techniques that were possible to to improve plant growth, but with natural energies, with natural electric and magnetic energies. And so we come through, and also sound energies, uh, music and different sound waves. And so we we, we come to the ob to the subject of electroculture. And, uh, but it's a way, it's years after that I discovered the word really of electroculture. And uh, that, that groups all those techniques together because electroculture is about um, the use of the influence of electricity and magnetism and natural energies and subtle energies that are all around us and the, the, their influence on plant growth and on, and on the fertility of the soil. And so I discovered like that, that there, were, that there exist a lot of techniques that are already existing that are not, uh, that, that we don't learn at school, that they are not taught at school, and that, that can make huge difference, that can improve really uh, uh, the yields and the plant growth like by double, triple, and sometimes uh, five times more. I saw already results over the years. Now it's more than 20 years that I do experiments with all that. So I saw a lot of things. And I saw some results where, where we uh, increased, where we multiply by five or six the yields, like on carrots sometimes or on, on corn, on wheat or on uh, on beetroot or on um, beets, beetroot, uh, on lettuce. I uh, really sometimes we had lettuce like fifty centimeters diameter, really like in in a in a box. In place of putting six uh, lettuce, we put only uh, two, <laughs> for example. Uh, uh, we, I saw really amazing things that if I if I would tell that to a normal guy, a normal farmer that, that never knew about electroculture, he would say, oh, Yannick, he is really completely crazy what he is telling you, uh, it's not possible. So, and, 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 and that's why I mostly say to people, oh, with electroculture, you can increase like 30% uh, um, uh, plant growth or yields, because 30% is like, oh, yes, that's possible. But in reality, it can be way more. It can be really a lot, a lot more. No, now uh, you never know in advance because it will depend also on everybody's local conditions, the soil, the, his energy, his own energy, the fields, uh, how he is uh, producing, which techniques he uses. Uh, so it, it's it's uh, walls and, and that, the climate too. Every year will be different. It's normal, but if you will compare with electroculture techniques, and without, you will see difference. I I, ass I I I assure you. I promise you, you will see difference. It's also good if you begin to do electroculture techniques. It's to try different electroculture technique because there are a lot of techniques you have you have like uh, antennas like this to put in the air atmospheric antennas you have round towers you have uh, you have uh, lakovsky coils you have a lot of things you can do but uh, certain techniques will really work very well in certain conditions or on certain plants and other techniques will work better on other plants. So uh, so if you do only one technique, then maybe if you don't have results, you will say, oh, it doesn't work. No, it's not that it doesn't work. It maybe didn't work in in your condition or in, in, in your context, but 
uh, if you would do different techniques, you will see there will some will work really amazingly uh, very good and other less, but another year it will be another technique. Um, there are some gardeners and farmers that have really record yields, but the most of them that work with me that have record yields, it's because they also use different techniques together, not only one technique, even if one technique can work. But it, I want to respond to that, that sometimes uh, most people that begin to discover electroculture, they ask like the question, uh, which technique is the best to do? Uh, which technique is the best? There is no best. <laughs> there is no bad too. It's it's uh, you have different kind of energies. You have the magnetic field of the earth. You have the electrical field of the earth. You have the the radio waves of the earth. So each technique will work on a certain aspect of the of the uh, wave spectrum. You can see that like this of the. Of the of the whole spectrum of subtle energies of invisible energies of of uh, of the of of the magnetic frequencies and magnetic energies and also electrical energy. So uh, uh, that's why it's important or it can be interesting to combine to use multiple different techniques together because you will you will uh, work on different aspects of those energies that will improve. It's like if you would compare with uh, when you grow plants, you need to optimize the water, the hydration, the water. You need to optimize the temperature. You need to optimize um, the nutrients, the food nutrients. You need to optimize the physical properties of the soil. Of uh, So you need to optimize different aspects. It's not only... Uh, water is more important of temperature or temperature more important of nutrients. No, it's all important. You can optimize every aspect. And with uh, electroculture is also. Electroculture is uh, above all those classical aspects that we already know or that, that is known in, in agriculture universities. Okay. But electroculture is but just above that, we will look at the invisible waves. We will look, we will optimize the magnetism. We will optimize the electrical field. We will optimize the subtle energies around the plant or in the field. And, and so it will uh, even increase the results. You see, it's not, uh, it's not competitor with uh, nutrients or water or, 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 or whatever classic uh, aspects. No, it's uh, really um, uh, um, how to say that it's complementary. Yes, it's complementary. <clears throat> I will uh, look at some of your questions. Do you use fertilizer? I only use natural uh, fertilizer, uh, j just like uh, uh, from my uh, from the cows or from the the the. Uh, from the um, from the animals, uh, otherwise, or, or just uh, pieces of wood and pieces of plants. Uh, uh, but I, I otherwise I don't use uh, fertilizer. Uh, um, uh, if you use uh, chemical fertilizers, that's not so good, because an example. Uh, I prefer the organic way for sure, uh, normal. Uh, but I work, or I have also customers in, uh, in chemical uh, uh, agriculture and uh, 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 electroculture techniques will also, with them, with, will also improve. And when you will use electroculture techniques, you will see that by the months and years that pass by, you will not need any more so much chemicals or not anymore completely you 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 will be able to say bye bye to uh, chemical fertilizers because you don't need them anymore so why using them if you have as good results with electroculture techniques and similar with organic fertilizers there are some organic fertilizers you don't need 
you don't need it's um, with electroculture uh, if you go really uh, if you use really uh, the, the best techniques of electroculture you can even grow plants on um, on rocks only rocks and water and pure water and and you will have beans and you will have wheat uh, even better yields than in the real soil with nutrients and with fertilizers. What I say here, maybe it seems like completely crazy what Yannick is telling, but I'm not telling that. It's uh, in, in one book, and I did that's in the book of, of Justin Christophe Lowe uh, that you find back uh, on, uh, on my internet site and on internet, if you look, if you search a little bit for it, you will find it. It's for free on in PDF, and it was found back in, Cran in in Canberra in in Australia. And Justin Christophe Lowe, uh, here Justin Christophe Lowe is one of the pioneers inventors of electroculture uh, uh, on agricultural uh, really uh, a model. Uh, uh, um, a size it's not just in the garden no he, he did electroculture in the beginning of the century of last century in 1919 until uh, 1938 he did electroculture and he developed antennas that he that he sold all over the world even in australia in new zealand in africa in china in germany and us uh, Canada, everywhere, and and uh, and it was in those years. Uh, internet even didn't exist. Justin Christophe Lowe is an inventor from France. Huh? Uh, uh, France was in the beginning of the century really like a platform, really like where there was the most knowledge about electroculture uh, in the beginning of last century, almost the most. Also, some in England, also and. Uh, little bit in Germany, but in Germany was a lot of uh, copying from uh, Justin Christophe Lowe and from what was happening in, uh, in France. In Italy too, there were also experiments, very interesting experiments, but different way of doing electroculture, but also very interesting. Um, and in Russia, but in Russia in that time, um, yes, in Russia with Spechnev and, and, and others, there were also very interesting techniques. So in that time, uh, you have the the very big uh, empires like uh, England, uh, uh, France, uh, Germany, Russia that had uh, research about electroculture. But after World War II or during World War II, everything about electroculture was erased. They erased everything because they wanted to impose uh, chemical fertilizers and all those things. And uh, and then electroculture was like completely censored, completely forgotten, until uh, some pioneers like me came uh, again in the beginning of uh, the to, uh, of uh, of the the twenty first century. Uh, so uh, I began in ninety eight, and I did my first big experiments in large fields. Um, uh, first with electromagnetic water treatment in the years 2001, 2003, and then uh, 2007. And then in 2008, I began to do uh, really electroculture techniques with magnets that I put in the soil uh, in the fields with uh, huge results. And, uh, and, and that I did uh, since uh, 2008, Till now, 2022, I, I do that. I do a lot of different techniques. Uh, but I begin, uh, my first beginning was that book. And then, you see, with time, it began to, to be a lot of books and information. And then I tried out in the fields. And, and now I have a kind of experience that I can share with you. That's why I can do live videos and share with you uh, tons and tons of information. And I can talk like uh, uh, hours and hours about electroculture techniques. Uh, uh, so there, there is so much to discover and uh, so much to do. So <coughs> um, I have a still a little bit sick, but it's okay. <coughs> um, 
So I will read some of your questions to, to, to respond. I avoid seeds from supermarkets. I just get all species. Yes, that's very interesting uh, in relation to electroculture is that all seeds that are reproductive, uh, in most cases, we have a lot more uh, results with electroculture techniques on old seeds. In co if we compare with modern seeds or even GMO seeds or, or uh, seeds with, uh, uh, that are hybrid, we have also results uh, on, on modern seeds, hybrid seeds and, and, and industrial seeds. But on old seeds, it's like they adapt more rapidly, a lot more rapidly. You will see with electroculture that the plants adapt really more rapidly. An example, if you put um, a cannabis, for example, in a, uh, uh, with electroculture, and you take a plant that is selected to, to not have many much, uh, uh, to, to not have many uh, uh, active product inside, uh, 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 um, uh, special, are there special uh, nutrients or, or, or special oils inside? Well, when you will, when you will grow it with electroculture techniques, I assure you that the natural, the, the natural uh, uh, being of the plant come back really quick and they produce again a lot of active nutrients inside. Uh, and we see that also, for example, with a tomato. You take a tomato seeds only after the first year with electroculture techniques, the seeds become a lot bigger, a lot bigger and uh, a lot more vigorous. And the taste of the tomatoes become every year better and better. I have this year, I had tomatoes like never before. It was like a, a fruit with sugar. It was really a very high sugar content. And it was not only on one species of tomato. It was on a lot of species. It was like flavor like I never had before. There is even a vegetable grower that do electroculture uh, with my technique since uh, oh, more than uh, almost 10 years already, or five to 10 years, I really, uh, from long time. And um, uh, he sell on the local market uh, uh, close to his farm. And, and uh, uh, all the people say he has the best vegetables the best because they taste like like they never had before. He has the best and it's the first uh, uh, when he sell on the market, he is the first to sell everything out. He, he, he sell and he is the first uh, to have his, his, uh, his shop completely empty. And then the people go to the other to, to buy what they need uh, if, if it's empty to a space because uh, he has the best products and uh, and so he, he the, the people with time they know that and then they, they just uh, first uh, go to his place uh, because they are the best products. Uh, so uh, if, if it responds to you, I will show you uh, uh, graphics and I will show you uh, scientific results about that uh, over time. Uh, now I, I, I have to prepare some paper <laughs> to that, uh, but uh, I will show you that. Um, so, sorry, I, uh, oh. um, yeah. <clears throat> so I will look at your, uh, your, at your questions. My first year with creating feed around to me and I got over 500 pounds best year. Yes, this year was really a good year with the climate. I don't know in your country, but here in France, uh, in the region where I am, I never had so good tomatoes than this year. The climate was really perfect um, in the mountains where I live. Um, not everywhere in France, because there was, was a, a severe drought here. It was not easy everywhere, that it was a difficult climate, but uh, I assure you, uh, uh, 
yeah, it was very good at my place too. And with electroculture uh, with it, it was really fantastic. Um, so store for seats. Uh, in France, I know a lot of stores for seats, um, but uh, you can find everywhere seats you have to look, find. and uh, But the best, really, I advise you, try to find local gardeners, local farmers, and to have the seeds from them. Why? Because the plants adapt also to your local climate. If you buy seeds in shops or somewhere or on the internet, the problem with that is that the seeds come from somewhere else, maybe some, sometimes from uh, the other side of the world. They can grow well too, but you have to know that uh, the seeds have like an electromagnetic signature of the local energies. And when you put them somewhere else, they need energy to adapt themselves again to the local energies. And if you put already seeds from, from the lo locally, then they are already adapted. It's like you gain energy. Yeah? Um, and if you, you will use electroculture techniques, you will see and different seeds, you will see the, the, which one grow the best and you will adapt year by year. You will, you have to learn, the best is to learn how to save the, our own seeds and, and to share around us. Uh, but it's to save, to make our own seeds very important because they want to take back our, uh, uh our knowledge about how to save our own seeds. But it's very, very important because uh, a lot of seeds we can buy or a lot of hybrids or GMOs. And then when you, you want to save them again, they don't grow as well because they are like um, mutilated to, to, to only grow one generation. You see, they do it uh, by purpose to to be able. They do it by purpose to sell you every year the same seed from the company. To and they don't learn you how to to uh, uh, how to yield your own seeds. But I assure you, when you do electroculture, you have really a big advantage to yield your own seeds and to use them. You will see over the years they will grow better and better. And, uh, and it will be with no comparison with any seeds you can buy. You understand? I think uh, you, you understand. <clears throat> ah, Rife, uh, some, so a middle way, ask about Rife frequencies to change the seed structure. Um, I know about Rife uh, research, very interesting uh, in alternative medicine. Um, but I didn't uh, test it on seeds. Uh, but if somebody tests it, uh, you can share uh, your your experiments about this. It, it's for sure very interesting. Uh, but I didn't test with high frequencies. It's uh, also wall field of research. Very interesting. You have also Hulda Clark uh, frequencies. Hulda Clark research. It's very interesting too. Um, and there are a lot of devices in alternative medicine using uh, electromagnetic waves of different uh, of different kinds and uh, with certain results. And the 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 one I will uh, tell you a lot is about the research of uh, George Lakowski. George Lakowski did also a device of alternative medicine uh, with uh, frequencies that work really very good. And with uh, Lakowski devices, I worked uh, a lot and uh, I had really huge results. Also for energizing water, it works really very good too. So we, we will, I will show you that in, in later videos, uh, I promise you. Uh, um, uh, but uh, it's very interesting subject too. Uh, we, we can talk uh, already hours just about uh, George Lakowski, Reif, uh, it's really very interesting, Ulda Clark, uh, Bob Beck, uh, uh, really, we, we will see that. Um, so, uh, uh, Cannabis uh, YouTube show to talk about electroculture. Yes, if you want to invite me, uh, it's okay, I can talk about electroculture. Uh, but it's not specially for cannabis, it's for all plants, it's good. Uh, I I don't want to just uh, promote cannabis. Uh, uh, 
uh, cannabis is naturally a fantastic plant. Uh, uh, but um, uh, uh, I, I want to promote uh, a self-sustainment uh, to, to make uh, everybody their own gardens of, for food. Very important now because uh, of what they do in our world on geopolitical economic uh, uh, crisis. Uh, it's very important to grow our own food and with electroculture, really, uh, it can make a huge difference. For example, if you invest every day one hour or a few hours a week for work to, to produce a certain quantity of vegetables, you want to produce a maximum of vegetables and the best ones that will have a preservation a life uh, a time span uh, uh, preservation of very good quality and uh, also good quality of nu nu nutritious and life energy. Well, when you will do electroculture above it, it will just take you a few hours in your garden to put electroculture techniques and then you don't have to, to worry anymore about it. It's installed, it's forever. It's for years and years it will work when you put antennas. And then you will multiply your yields by two. It's like for the same amount of work, you will increase. It's better than the, than the stock exchange and, and everything. It's really, you will increase a lot your yields and your results. So it's, it's normal. It's, uh, I, I advise naturally to do that. And I'm, I'm not saying that to sell you my devices, my towers, or, or my antennas, or no, uh, you can buy them on my site. It will sustain my work, and so I can continue to share with you and to develop activities about electroculture. But I will learn you how to do it also if you have no money, just with pieces of wires and, and uh, some magnets you can f find in the bin or, or whatever. You can do already a lot of things. I assure you, you just need, uh, for example, pieces of galvanized steel wire, some magnets, and you can do antennas uh, really very easy and have already huge results. Uh, so uh, it's not about selling you something. Uh, uh, I need to sell things to life uh, to to have a certain earning to be able to work uh, to 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 pay my rent or to pay my home or or, or to to go to the market also and buy some food or things like that or clothes. Uh, but but um, uh, uh, the the first thing I want to do is to share with you all that knowledge. And I know that some people will buy me and that will sustain my work. So it's, it's not a problem. Um, uh, and it will also make new professions because some of you will become maybe advisors, will become uh, also uh, people that will advise farmers or gardeners and also help to install and, and make their own uh, uh, work out of that. And that's very good because uh, really... Uh, um, it, it will help a lot of people and we need to transform our food production in all the countries in the world because that's knowledge that was hide from us that can make us free of all those big multinationals of agrochemistry and, and, uh, and, uh, and seeds and, and uh, all those ag uh, uh, agro-industry that just are parasites. I say it. Uh, that's what. That's my. That's what I think. They are really today. Most of them, maybe not all, but most of them are really parasites that just a take our energy that we could have for free. Uh, we we don't need to give energy to parasites that just only learn us techniques to be dependent to be like slaves to them because they take the the benefit of what we produce it's not normal normally a farmer or a gardener uh, would be the most rich man in the whole community because they are feed everybody <laughs> they feed everybody so it's the is the most important it's the most valuable work you can do in a community so and and today they are the most poor it's not normal.
they, they need to be the richest in a certain way. Ah, it's, a, it's a caricatural view, a eh? caricature or caricatural view uh, that I say, but but it's, uh, that's the idea. And with electroculture, you will see you can become again more free or you can uh, become uh, more independent and, and, and less dependent uh, of, all, of all those multinationals and, and, and governments too that want to control everything. Uh, so it can be a huge difference. Also, the quality will do that you will be, uh, uh, you will have a lot better health. Uh, sorry, I'm, my health have to be <laughs> improved too, but uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a, a world difference when you eat products, uh, vegetables, uh, meat, uh, chickens uh, from uh, 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 from local farming and or from your gardens, it's a lot better than than from uh, uh, big factories uh, full of chemicals and and uh, that are tired and, and less energy and stressed. Uh, it's it's completely different. And so I advise you to the channel of uh, Ice Age Farmer. If you don't know, uh, look uh, on internet about. He is really uh, very interesting uh, information that he shared too. Not about electroculture, but about all other subjects uh, of food production. So um, bad tomato year in Belgium. Ah, somebody say bad tomato. Some have good uh, uh, results in Belgium. Uh, you not? I don't know why. Um, uh, maybe too dry or what? Uh, if it's too dry, like to, uh, like this year was a very drought, a very dry year. Uh, the, there was almost no rain for several months. And well, with electroculture, you will see huge difference. When you put like antennas like this, that's the basic, uh, uh, the atmospheric antenna is like the Franklin, uh, uh, like uh, to attract the thunderstorms and uh, to to uh, reduce the risk of thunder to protect uh, uh, houses and things like that. They put something like this. Well, if you put that in the garden, you will see all plants will grow a lot better. Well, um, uh, when it's a, a very dry year, you will see that plants resist a lot more to drought. They, they resist really a lot more. So it can make a huge difference in, uh, in yields uh, in, in very dry conditions. So, um, oh, thank you, Middle Way, uh, for what you are saying. Um, so I'm looking for. I, Jos de Vries say uh, in in Dutch. I speak Dutch too, uh, so that uh, there is uh, less, not much information in Dutch. Yes, Dutch is a very little country, uh, Netherlands and Belgium. Uh, so uh, it's normal. There's not much information, but uh, I promise you, I will make also lives and videos in Dutch uh, uh, to help you, uh, because I speak also Dutch and and uh, and I'm. I'm from uh, uh, Belgium uh, originally. I, I live in France, but I'm from Belgium. I, I grew up in Gerardsbergen. Uh, so uh, I want to help also my um, uh, the people from where I am, from my uh, uh, where I grew up. Uh, I like very much uh, the Belgian people and the, the Flemish. I speak uh, Flemish uh, or Dutch. Uh, that was my second language, uh, but I grew up in France. But all my school education I did in in, uh, in Dutch. Uh, so, um, and you will see, I, I was talking about uh, uh, in the beginning of that presentation, uh, the life about uh, my research I did about the influence of music and sounds on plant growth, and the first thesis. The first research uh, in in the thesis form uh, in the world was mine. <laughs> this is from Hoge School Ghent. is a high school in Ghent uh, in uh, nineteen so nineteen ninety to two thousand. But in reality, I begin in ninety eight. Uh, but uh, they they put it like this, and then the title is. Uh, it's in Dutch and Flemish. Uh, it's the influence of sound waves. 
uh, sound frequencies on the growth and development of plants. And then after, after year two, I, I did the translation in uh, French. Uh, uh, this is the translation. And for the English speaking part, uh, you uh, it's not translated in English for the moment, but it's in project. Uh, if somebody want to help to translate in English, they can contact me. Uh, I will be very happy uh, to sustain that. And this is very interesting is the research about Sonic Bloom. Sonic Bloom scientific packet. And Sonic Bloom, it's an American guy, Dan Carson, that did a lot of research influence of certain sound frequencies that we find back in classic uh, music and also in the bird songs. And he, he developed uh, a special music uh, to help plant code. And he had huge results. And they speak also about this in that book. There is a whole chapter about the influence of music on plant growth and about the work of Dan Carlson. Maybe I can show you uh, one piece about this uh, if I found it back. Ah, yes, here. Here you see corn of 16 feet high. You see corn of 16 feet high. And this is with the work of Don Carlson of Sonic Bloom. Huh? No, not much people know about him in the US, but he was also really a genius. You, you have to imagine those people like him, pioneers, that were convinced about the influence of music on plants or about magnetism or electricity. And in the beginning, I, 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 I lived that too in the beginning, when you were talking about that to other people, they just don't believe you. They just say, oh, you are a crazy guy or you are. And, and bit by bit, you, you meet people that believe you and that try it out. And then they see results and then you see in their eyes, they're really sprinkling. They are very happy. They are enthusiastic because they see results and it was fantastic. And then bit by bit, we create a whole community of people that see the results, that really uh, see the reality of it, that it's not just talking about uh, uh, techniques. No, we, we see the, the effects in our gardens. And, but uh, we cannot share that with everybody. Yes, we try to share it with everybody, but not everybody believes us or not everybody understand it or 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 one or or yes or, or believe enough to to try it out themselves. And um, so but I ad I advise you to try it out. <laughs> Just begin some somewhere in your garden. Just do something. And uh, you will see really huge results. Ah, Patti Troya Sexe, currently reading that book. Very good, thank you. Um, so I'm looking. Do you use the wooden pole for antenna like Christophe Lowe used? Um, so, Christophe Lowe, it's a whole subject huh, because he did. A lot of different antennas, uh, um, uh, but he began with kind of atmospheric antennas. So maybe I will show you the principle of the atmospheric antennas um, in this slide. So I will show you that. So you have already something to begin with in your garden. Uh, and maybe I will do in each life, I will show you one technique more in detail how to do and and so uh, uh, um, so we can begin with that with the atmospheric antenna i will show you so justin christophe Lowe, he worked uh, he did most of electroculture in 1919 until 1938 but before him uh, to tell a bit of the story there were already others uh, doing uh, electroculture but not on a farm level, or, or not, um, uh, was not very known, but but uh, they did, and there was research, official research also in 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 France. There was an agricultural high school uh, or university today um, in eighteen hundred ninety three, 
uh, that did uh, antennas like this. For example, here you see that's an article from Illustration from a journal, uh, a newspaper in uh, in, uh, uh, in 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 eighteen hundred in eighteen hundred ninety three. So it's very old. Huh? So you see, for example, you see that here you see an antenna, very big pole huh? with people. And you see wires that are in the soil, you see? You see? You see? And the idea is, is to put uh, wires in the air with uh, points uh, uh, like, uh, um, uh, like 10, 20, 30 wires in the air like this. And then to put a wire that go to, uh, 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 you have the pole that just uh, is there to to fix, uh, to have a pole, uh, uh, to put it very high. And then you have a wire that go uh, uh, to the soil and then is digged in the soil. And then you have here, you see that they put even wires, um, like a network of wires in the field. You see, to it's like to propagate that energy from the antenna uh all over the field but you have to see 100 years before in the year 1780s they did also uh, things like that but they didn't put the wires in the field they just put the wire like in the field but no n no no network it was only in the field and they have already huge results around huh? uh, but when you put wires then it propagates even more. It, you will have even more results. And the the first rule to make it work is to put it high enough, really high, not just a one meter or two meters. Uh, no, really, you put like three, four, five meters high. So uh, one meter is around three feet. Uh, so like uh, nine feet high or more, uh, or even... Uh, um, so nine feet is three meters around, or, or even um, uh, like uh, 18, uh, no, like, uh, yes, 18 feet high, 18, 20, 25 feet high. The highest you put it, the, 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 the bigger will be the area that will be uh, uh, stimulated. Also, like you see on that picture, it's in the open field. Don't put the antenna just close to a tree or something or close to a building because the building or the tree will take the energy uh, also. So uh, you will have less energy on the antenna. So it's better to do it in the open field or a little bit further away from trees or for, from uh, buildings. Otherwise, you need to put the antenna at the same height uh, or even higher than the tree and the buildings. You understand? So, um, I, I will show you with my other camera. We will do a test if it works very well. Uh, yes, I have a, like a, a, a board and I will show you uh, how you can do it. <coughs> I hope you hear me. Huh? So, So you see, here you have like uh, wires like this, huh? like wires like this. You put on a pole so that that pole can be an iron stick, it can be wood, it can be whatever you want. Uh, the the important is just that you have conductive material from top to the soil so uh, like uh, metal like uh, copper or iron or um, or aluminium it's also it will work too but aluminium is less strong but if you have only aluminium just use aluminium it will work too but uh, the the in the beginning of the century they used copper on top and then they put a galvanized steel wire a galvanized steel wire to the to the soil 
Just like crystal flow, he used mostly galvanized steel wire. You can also make it a wall and galvanized steel wire. It will work too. Um, we will go, I will tell more details about the technique, how you can even improve the things. But the basic, I, now I will only show you, explain you the basic. And if you only already do that, you will already have huge results. The, uh, the little details will just optimize, will even improve a little bit the, the effects. But if you already do the basic, you will have already huge results. Even in Africa, with very little uh, money, they, can, they do huge results. I have some customers there, or um, people I advise that even uh, um, are not customers, but that I advise that have huge results with only aluminum that they find uh, easily or more easily than copper or iron. So I will show you. So here, if you have, if you have uh, the antenna, if this is, for example, uh, 18 feet high, 18 feet, then it will have, then it will have an effect um, about 18 feet. In, in, in diameter. So, so uh, I, I hope you hear me. Uh, so if you have 18 feet high, you will have approximative an effect 18 feet diameter. So the higher you make your antenna, the, the, the bigger will be the area that will, you will have effect. But if you put the wires here, uh, if you connect to wires, then you can have also even effect on a bigger area than only 18 feet. So, very interesting. If you put uh, the antenna like on um, 10 feet, you will have a radius or, or no, a diameter of 10 feet. Uh, but if you put higher, even more. Um, if you put only like this high or this high, you will not have much effect. You can have effect too, but in most cases a lot less. Huh? Um, so how to make big antennas? The, the best, the most easy way is uh, to take like a, a bamboo, for example. That's uh, very cheap, a bamboo, and you put a wire uh, along the bamboo, very easy. Um, on top, for example, here, you have, you have this, you can take like a ring or something to fix it on the bamboo or on the pole with, with something. If, if it's uh, just uh, even another wire to, to fix it on the pole, for example, this is a pole and you put it around and you fix it, it will work too. But uh, you can also improve, for example, for example, here, ah, I don't look at this, it's just a tube that you can put on a pole. For example, there is a pole and you put it up on the pole. Uh, if this is iron stick, like a big iron stick, like in building materials, uh, the iron like uh, that is uh, very long, uh, strong uh, to make a concrete that you put in the concrete, you can use that because the iron stick is conductive, it's uh, metal and it will conduct, and then you don't need a wire, you, it will conduct the energy of the atmosphere uh, 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 through the soil, through the iron uh, pole. Uh, you can use that. Or you can use a, a wooden uh, pole, but if you use a wooden pole, then you have to put a wire all, all along. Uh. Um, and then also in the soil, use also galvanized steel wire, because if you use only uh, iron, but not galvanized, then with the acidity of the soil and so it will rust more quickly and it will have a time span or a long life time span that will uh, be uh, more short. Uh, uh, it's better galvanized steel. It's galvanized steel. What is galvanized steel? It's, it's iron with, um, with a layer of zinc. Of, of zinc metal, and this is the galvanization, like we tell it. Uh, so uh, uh, this will 
this will uh, last a lot longer in 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 time. It will rust a lot less, or uh, or or only uh, uh, maybe in ten years or twenty years. You see, so it it will have a lot longer uh, time span. Even if there is some rust, it will still work. Huh? But the rust will make like a, a little isolation layer, but not completely. Huh? Uh, if you have a, a rusty uh, wire co uh, connected to your electricity and you touch it, you will see it will conduct electricity. You will have an electrical shock. So uh, it, it's not so isolation. Huh? Uh, 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 so uh, uh, let's be serious. So, so, but um, it's better that that it don't uh, rust. Uh, it will it will uh, uh, reduce the effect. Um, so, but galvanized steel wire is very cheap. You can uh, bury it everywhere uh, in uh, garden stores or farming stores. So it's uh, no problem. Huh? And then what, what will this do uh, like this? I will uh, put that again off here. Um, do, do, do you see it very good? Uh, tell me in the comments if you hear me good or see good what I put on the, um, on the board. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah. <coughs> so I will put it. So what will happen? Scientifically, you will have, um, if you believe in electrons, it's also a hypothesis of how electricity works. Uh, you have to know that, for example, Nikola Tesla, uh, he invented the alternative motor, electrical motor and generators with the idea that electrons doesn't exist. So it's in our today world that we believe uh, or as kind of scientific community that electrons exist, but uh, maybe they don't exist. Uh, 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 there are other science or professor or science people that uh, believe they don't exist and they have a whole other way of seeing electricity. You can see electricity in different ways. You have different theories, different explanations. But what is important is just to know that it's only hypothesis and that we just uh, use those hypotheses to try to understand how it works. And so <coughs> uh, there is an effect that we, uh, that we say um, it's the electrical point effect. It's that on the, on the, um, uh, to say on the, on the points, you have the electrons, the, ah, yes, the, the earth, it charges negatively. We say it's the negative pole of a battery, and the sky is charged positively. The sky, and then the 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 electrons from the earth will go through the pole to the points and will escape. You see, they will escape. They will go to the positive because they are attracted to the positive. And so uh, it's like it will attract continuously the electrons from the earth. You see, well, it will attract. It will stimulate like an electrical current through through the air and uh, through the, the atmosphere, and it will stimulate like a lot of electrical currents in the soil. If they would not have that antenna, you will not have that electrical current. Uh, because then it's like it's disconnected, and uh, and all plants here will grow a lot better. You see the plants. The plants here will grow like uh, a lot better. Uh, up. Uh, sorry, up my leaves. <laughs> if you are further away, the plant will be a lot little. You see. Up. But they will be not only more little, they will be also less stronger. They will have less nutrient uh, content. 
uh, they will have less energy, so they will be weaker, they will be more attacked by sickness, by a lot of problems that you will not have here. So that's a huge difference, that can make a huge difference. Um, so you have the electrical point effect, and then you have another uh, effect, is the electroosmosis. Electroosmosis is is uh, that water molecules will follow the electrical flow, will follow the flow of electrons. They will go from uh, the negative pole to the positive pole. And so the water, H2O, the water molecule, the water molecule will go from deep in the earth to the surface. And so the roots of the plants in dry conditions, they will have more moisture. It will stay more humid uh, around the antennas in the, in the summer, for example. So you will need less uh, to water the plants. Uh, it, it will help a lot. Um, uh, mostly in dry conditions is very interesting. And um, uh, what else? You have also um, the umbrella effect. Very interesting. That's in that book. It's a book from uh, Holland. Uh, I will show you that book uh, as soon as I find it back here in my library. Uh, oh la la, where is it? Where is it? I, I saw it. Um, oh, I, I ah, here. So that, that we found in that book, uh, I show you that book. So the forgotten pollution of um, a clue academic publishing. It's a, a lot of scientific published from Rose, uh, Rhein Rose. It's in English. And you see it's about electricity. It's about electricity in uh, in cities uh, you see they they explain very good the the electrical charge of particles of pollution of um, antennas very interesting and um, so you have the umbrella effect and the umbrella effect create like an electrical atmosphere around the antenna that will be that will have um a, 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 a positive effect on plant growth and or and that will have more negative charge around that is very beneficial for plants and so we can see that like this you see it like this like this is that you have I will explain you between the atmosphere on high altitude in the ionosphere and the soil you have like under to 300,000 fold so i repeat 100 to 300,000 fold and that corresponds with around 100 fold every meter high so every meter you have 100 fold so when you are 2 meters you have already 200 folds and um, and then when you have the zero volt here on soil level, you will put the zero volt here. And here you have at one meter, you have 100 volt. Here you have 200 volt. Here you have 300 volt. So you will have 300 volt here and zero volt here. And so just above the antenna, you will have an electrical field that will be very concentrated of uh, hundreds of, or uh, maybe uh, if the antenna is like uh, 10 meters high, you will have a thousand fold on a few centimeters, on one inch, for example. Um, that on ground level, you will have only 100 fold on one meter, on three feet. But uh, on top of the antenna, it will be very concentrated. It's like on top of a mountain or on top of a tree, uh, you have high voltage, really high voltage, uh, and, uh, and an electrical field that is very high concentration, like uh, 100 volt a centimeter or something, or 100 volt uh, um, 
uh, an inch, uh, or to two centimeter and a half an inch, or a 300 fold an inch, for example. And um, this will even amplify the 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 flow of electrons to the to, to the air. And here it creates here uh, uh, below the hundred fold it creates like an antioxidant or uh, um, uh, electrical field that is very beneficial for plant growth. So it's invisible to the eyes, but with electronic equipment you can measure that. You can measure that also around the tree. For example, if this is a tree, it will work the same way, and that's uh, why the the the, the sap flow, the the water in the tree. Uh, go up, it's through electroosmosis. Because if you have a tree, for example, this is a tree with a branch here, a uh, uh, branch here with, with leaves, with leaves. Uh, I will show you some leaves here. And you, you will put, for example, you will put a wire from the soil through that branch, then what will happen? The electrons, in place of, of going through the stem of the tree, they go through the wire. And then the, the, the water, the, 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 the sap that normally have to go up through electrosmosis in the tree will stop flowing. And you can even kill a tree like this. So, Never put an antenna directly in the tree. No, just put it on the side of it, but never in the tree. You understand? Because otherwise, if you connect it, you will make like a, a, a disruption of, of the electrical, natural electrical flow in the plant, and then uh, it will not be good for the plant. So it's important if you have the plant, it's beside, you don't put the antenna in the plant. <laughs> you, because otherwise you do uh, a, sh a shortcut, a short circuit. Uh, so a very important. Uh. So it's all little rules, but if you don't know, you can easily make some errors that can have harmful effects on the plants in place of beneficial effects. That's why we have to understand how a plant grow electrically. How, it, how a plant is influenced by the magnetic field and the electrical field all around. And that can make us understand how it grows and how we can uh, stimulate that, or and how not to do uh, bad things, uh, but how to stimulate it. So I hope it was interesting what, what I was telling. Huh? Uh, uh, just some basic uh, about uh, uh, how an atmospheric antenna works. Um, uh, but you, with, with this, you can already do a lot of things, like you see. Uh, so you, you see the, the, some basic uh, information that can have huge results already on your gardens. <coughs> so now I will see how uh, some, some of your questions. Uh, um, is 5G killing plants? Uh, yes, it can kill plants. Uh, um, 4G too, 4G, 3G, it's all bad for plants uh, mostly, but um, uh, uh, it is a complex, complex uh, knowledge uh, to understand in detail how it works. But uh, uh, the, 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 the artificial electromagnetic waves, like uh, uh, those artificial radio waves, already uh, a certain researcher that is named Bose in a uh, 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 hundred years ago, he already discovered that with the first radios, it had already harmful effects on trees, that it disrupted the electroosmosis process in the tree, and the subflow, the, the water, um, is like um, the water flow or the subflow in the plant is like reduced. So it will like depress the plant. It will grow a lot better without those harmful uh, radio waves than with. 
And, and that's what we see the last years, um, like since 20 years, uh, the, the development of uh, uh, cell phones and of all those electromagnetic pollution is like uh, increasing exponentially. And uh, we see also exponentially uh, tree that tree that in woods completely complete forests are, are dying now in in the mountains in the Rocky Mountains in the U.S. or here in France in the in the in the Alps and in the Vosges. Uh, there are really huge uh, 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 mortality of trees, and then. Uh, the classic agronomist that don't know about electroculture and those things, they say, oh, it's that insect or that uh, 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 bacteria or that uh, uh, fungus that killed the tree. No, it's not that. It's the electromagnetic waves that pollution will weaken the tree. So I repeat, that electromagnetic wave will weaken the tree through disruption of that electro osmosis process for example and then the plant is weaker and then you have the pests that are there to to transform the the decaying plant in compost so they they just uh, develop then you have the fungus you have bacteria you have the insects that will eat the dying tree it's it's just uh, normal but that's not because of the insect it's not because of the fungus it's not because of the bacteria no it just, it's like you would find uh, uh, an example. You, you find somebody dead in the street or in, in, uh, somewhere in nature. Somebody is, is, that, is that there from a, or an animal dead uh, from a, a couple of days. And you see uh, larvae of, of, uh, of, of, um, of flies, a larvae of flies. You don't say, oh, he is dying because of the larvae of the flies. No. He has died, he was died, and then flies uh, put their larvae on it that eat the meat and eat everything. Uh, uh, but it's not because of the fly. The fly is just clean up. He, he is just eating the decaying uh, meat or the decaying uh, of, of, of a dead body. But that's not because of the, of the fly. He is not a pest. Uh, he, he is just uh, doing his role and and uh, and 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 I, I would say even today there are people like transforming in zombies and and, uh, and uh, uh, not so much animals but but people because they are so intoxicated with with uh, 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 cell phone radiation with uh, all kind of radiation in cities and also uh, with uh, toxic uh, waste uh, in their food. Uh, toxic products, uh, toxic uh, chemicals, and everything, that their vital energy, it's so less, it's, they are so weak, that I, uh, I would say that in, in a certain future, maybe the fly will put their eggs already on the living uh, uh, human. Ah, it's not so living anymore. It's like a zombie. And so they, they will treat the zombie like he is already dead. And then you will have a lot of parasites that will develop on them, like their skin become completely destroyed, uh, uh, like you, you uh, they, they are really decaying. Uh, you see that sometimes on people that uh, take too much drugs <laughs> or things like that, or really toxic drugs. Um, so it's, uh, it's really a catastrophe catastrophe human beings uh, sometimes do really big catastrophes with themselves mm. but that's not because of nature and nature is just living his way every animal every plant every insect is just living his way uh, uh, the question is why are there so much sickness today that were not before but it's because we do everything to weaken their energies. And then the sickness, uh, the, the past, uh, develop themselves. But it's not because of the past itself. It's because we do everything to weaken the plant. If we weaken a plant in our garden, it's logic that there are a lot of pests eating them. So it's very logic. So if we have a lot of pests, it's just 
that we have to question ourselves what do i do badly to 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 attract all those pests but that's not because of the past what do i badly to make life so difficult for that plant <laughs> or for that animal or for my children or for my the humans uh, and we know what we do uh, we just have to inform ourselves uh, so um now the other question does those kind of antennas protect against cell phone radiation and 5g and things like that i would say yes and no <clears throat> It's indirect protection. It's not direct protection. It's not that it will create shield uh, uh, to protect you uh, uh, against the radiation. No, the radiation will still be there. Um, even it can also uh, uh, capture certain radiation, like radio waves. It's everywhere, but we need a radio with a specific antenna to, to collect that radio wave and to transform in music or on the in the radio program well uh, those antennas will also capture radio waves if you connect a radio to it you will also capture radio waves you will also uh, transform into music if you want but those antennas are made specifically to collect or to stimulate the natural radio waves and the natural electro electrical fields the natural magnetic fields and so this those natural waves i don't speak about the artificial now i speak about the natural waves of the earth because you have also natural radio waves every time there's thunder on the on the on earth you have a huge a, a huge uh, um, a, uh, 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 composition of kind of or radio waves uh, that we uh, tell half waves, uh, low frequency radio waves, and also high frequency radio waves. Uh, uh, you hear it even in a normal radio psh, when there is thunderstorm. You you hear it. Uh, so it's it's a really uh, uh, natural radio waves, but those natural ones are very beneficial for plant growth. You see when there is thunder. Even with very less rain, all plants become again a lot more greener and a lot, a lot better. And a lot they grow a lot quicker and more healthy. There are really a huge energy explosion. Huh? So, um, <coughs> so uh, uh, the, those those beneficial radio waves will be amplified by the antenna. And this will increase the energy of the plants. And that increasing of life energy of the plants, because we all need those natural electrical waves and magnetic waves, that, that increasing of energy will make us more resistant to the, to the aggression of, the, of all those uh, artificial waves. You understand? And the problem in cities, is that we have cut down the trees, we have cut down uh, the, the nature all around that emits also natural waves that are very beneficial for us. And so in cities, we, we are disconnected already. And then we, we, uh, we replace those good energies with all artificial radio waves, uh, 5G, 3G, uh, um, and so it makes us even weaker and weaker and so it's a it's a vicious spiral uh, for the bad and uh, and then you have more sicknesses and everything when you live in the country yard already you you are mostly more healthy in most cases and you are more in in contact with the natural energies just do a handshake with somebody living in cities in an apartment building just a handshake and a handshake with a local farmer that that works in the earth with his hand, give a handshake. You will see that he is a lot more stronger. He has energy, really. And the guy from the apartment uh, all day on on uh, on uh, on internet or on, on uh, videos and things like that, and or playing uh, with uh, electronic uh, 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 devices. Um, he, he has, it's like he loses all his vital energy. And then he, even if he looks strong, 
he is not strong. He, he is completely like a sponge. Uh, like uh, you are afraid to give him a handshake because maybe his hand is broken afterwards. <laughs> So uh, uh, it's that, that, that's that kind of energy. It's it's not about how much muscles you have or things like that. No, it's really like uh, insight energy. It's like a, um, like an, a kind of electrical field you have also around uh, your your body that that is uh, representing that er energy. It's like a charisma too. Mm. So uh, thank you for uh, uh, good analogies. Thank you. <laughs> I, I try to to explain with my uh, little vocabulary of English. Uh, uh, sometimes it's not easy. Sorry. Yes, uh, uh, middle way is talking about Schumann frequencies. Yes, it's those radio waves emitted by the thunderstorms is a lot of Schumann frequencies. And the Schumann frequencies, we will talk also later in other videos about it. Um, it's really very important for health and plant growth and, and, uh, and also for animals. Uh, and today we are like disconnected of the Schumann frequencies because the Schumann frequencies are very important, but the signal in intensity is very weak. And we have invented so much electromagnetic pollution that have a, a, a lot stronger signal that our bodies, our natural cells have difficult now to connect to, to connect to the natural frequencies because there's so much pollution. And then when you increase the, the Schumann frequencies in your garden, uh, in your home, you will see everything become better. Everything grow better. You, you, you are less. Um, you are more focused on your ideas because uh, uh, electromagnetic pollution creates confusion, and and your your brain doesn't work completely well, so it creates confusion, uh, memory problems, and with the uh, Schumann waves, it's like you connect again with the earth magnetic field and the earth knowledge. It's like a library. Uh, uh, Rupert Sheldrake speaks about that. It's like a morphogenetic fields. It's like we connect again. Um, and most uh, magnetizers or, or uh, people, uh, uh, therapeutic uh, or alternative medicine people that work with energies, uh, when when we look at their brainwave activity, in most cases, they, they have more activity at the Schumann frequencies. Because that is also very interesting, is that the, the Schumann frequencies of the Earth are vibrating in the same uh, uh, frequency range of our uh, brain. It's not a coincidence. It's really in the same frequency spectrum. So it's very important. We are really in relation with that. And those round towers uh, can help to in a natural way to increase the Schumann waves all around. And you will see a lot of plants grow a lot better. In, in France, we have now uh, three years in a row the record of the, of the biggest uh, sunflower head uh, 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 with uh, towers like this and with electroculture. And without any chemical fertilizer in our network of the electroculture community, there are several that have really record yields and, and on sunflowers record plants. Uh, it's very interesting because we just gardeners uh, uh, with, with not so much knowledge about uh, uh, agronomy, uh, uh, we make records <laughs> that even agrochemistry industry or even all research laboratory uh, uh, paid with a lot of grants with our taxes they they cannot achieve <laughs> because they don't know how it works they don't know about it uh, so it's really uh, amazing that's really very funny <laughs> uh, so uh, uh, anecdote, uh, 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 there was one time I did a presentation in Sri Lanka and there were even professors that were listen, listening uh, to that presentation because they, they don't know about electroculture. Uh, uh, it, it's really amazing. It's like in the time of, of Shusta Christoph Lowe, in that time, he was also an independent 
researcher, uh, uh, craftsman, uh, uh, he has his own enterprise. He was, he was completely independent. Uh, uh, he, de he didn't work really with uh, research laboratories or research official institutions. Uh, they, the official institutions, they were only working with the agrochemistry industry. So they, 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 they were not working really about electroculture. There was some, but not so much, but there was some. Now today there is nothing anymore, but we hope it will uh, begin again uh, um, that uh, they they become uh, interested in that. Uh, that's why we are here to to tell them uh, to uh, look to look at that subject and to begin to do their own experiments like everybody. <clears throat> well, I see we do already one hour thirty. Uh, time uh, goes so fast by. Um, uh, I will look at your question. Oh, there's so much. I didn't have the time to read everything. Um, ah, yes, uh, somebody is asking uh, if, if I can put uh, subtitles in my videos in English. Thing on that, uh, sorry that most of my videos are in French. And the, the subtitles were not activated, and that's why uh, it was difficult to 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 read. But uh, now, I um, uh, there are some uh, basic videos, uh, some uh, 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 important videos that I I'm working on it, and so you will have the subtitles, and I will do them again uh, completely in English, so it will be even more easy. Uh, it will just take time. Uh, I have much to do, and and I do uh, everything step by step. Uh, uh, um, ah, somebody, Isaac Ramirez. I'm from the U.S. I'm doing a study over electroculture. Very good, um, and developing an apparatus similar to Christoflow. Very good. So I'm also do doing a reproduction of Christoflow's device. I will do the reproduction of all his devices. It's in my project too. But it's more like a, a, a collector item because now I, I make also my own devices that are with um, with the knowledge of today. Huh? Uh, uh, we, we know uh, more than in time of crystal flow now. Huh? It's like uh, the first bicycles, the first cars. Uh, today uh, they are improved huh? over over hundred years. So uh, today uh, similar. I developed uh, a, a lot of. Um, improvements in my eyes uh, with very good results too uh, uh, i have hundreds of customers in in in, uh, in farming and in gardening uh, so uh, we, we see um, you you can look at in the social networks and on my blog uh, uh, it's in french but uh, we will do one time in english too uh, you will see there are hundreds of testimonials of results so um uh, Doing exactly like Christoph Lowe did, it's very interesting, but it's not uh, the cheapest way. <laughs> uh, if you want to make it cheaper, uh, it's today we have other materials, we have a lot of improvements that make that we can make it better and cheaper. And so, uh, I will show you really uh, an original device from Christoph Lowe. I will show you. It's really a collector item uh, um, uh, that I that I uh, found back. It's a whole story how I found that back. Uh, but uh, uh, it's really a collector item. Uh, there's nobody else that have that item. I will show you. Uh, there is also one in the uh, US that found one original uh, crystal flow antenna. Uh, I will show you pictures, or maybe one time he will also participate to the live and show. Um, uh, so uh, there are some items that we can find back, but it's very difficult. It's really collector items for a museum. So uh, and, and that's my my aim too. I want uh, one day in my life, I, I would like to open a little museum about uh, electroculture to show all those very old articles. For example, here I have an article from the magazine Nature from 1900. And there is, a, uh, there is an article about electroculture. You see here, electroculture. So I, I will uh, explain you that too. And here in that article, that's 1904 in English, 
in the Scientific American. It's a very famous scientific magazine, even still today. Yeah? Uh, the, the, so in 19, uh, uh, 1904, and there is also an article about electroculture we, we would talk about, very interesting too. Uh, there is also this article, very interesting, in, uh, also Scientific American in 1919. And that's about uh, seat electrification. And that, uh, uh, so we, you see, there's so much information. We will see that over the different lives. We will go over, uh, to, uh, we will go through all that information. I will share you everything about that. Uh, so, like I did in French too. Um, so, to come back, uh, yes, I wanted to show you. So, to conclude that presentation, I hope. You liked it, and uh, 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 so tell me your advice or your comments, how I can improve or, or what you liked, what you didn't like. Uh, uh, send me messages uh, um, uh, so I can uh, improve uh, those those videos too. And um, uh, you, you will find back those videos also uh, on YouTube and on my channel. So uh, if one day YouTube censor me, uh, you will find it back on Odyssey. And uh, you'll find it back also on different platforms and my site. Um, so um, I will show you to conclude that really that piece of art, that piece of electroculture that is uh, really historical uh, piece of Justa Christoflou. It was one of his last pieces he made with his uh, secretary that was Leonie Reboisson. Uh, uh, he died in, um, in uh, 1938, I think, and in, in uh, the same year, Leonie Reboisson uh, um, uh, made this. Uh, it, uh, so he, 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 she made this with uh, Christophe Lou just before, probably. Uh, and so I will show you that. And you see that in some patterns of uh, Christophe Lowe and Leoni. <coughs> you see, it's this. So you would think, oh, that's strange, because in the book of Christophe Lowe, you see... Um, you see things more like uh, antennas in the air. But this one is completely digged in the earth. You see, it's like this. You see. You see. It's very... Uh, um, um, uh, it's uh, a big weight. Huh? It's like oh, maybe uh, 10 kilos or something. You see, it's an iron. You see above. Here you see zinc, and this is copper. And uh, and then at the end here he he connected the wire. I'll show you here. You see he connected the wire that was put north south direction in the field. So I will explain you this on the board in later times. Um, but you can also use in place of this. You can also use just a piece of magnet, and you will have also huge results. But this is optimization of crystal flow. It's really the top <laughs> in a certain way. Uh, but uh, 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 but it's an interesting piece because when we study that antenna, uh, that earth magnetic antenna that was digged in the earth, uh, at the end, he didn't use anymore the atmospheric antennas. He he used completely antennas that were completely in the earth, and uh, it's very interesting because it's more discreet. Uh, he had also huge results. Uh, it's more easy to install in a certain way. Um, well, when we study this, we can learn a lot of things, uh, really a lot of things, and uh, I I will. Uh, uh, um, we can take even an hour just to study that antenna. And that can help us to understand how it works and how to improve other antennas and how to do new antennas. And, um, and that's how I developed afterwards. I will show you my own antenna. That is, you, it's, it seems completely different, but it's the uh, same inspiration, this one. See? 
very lightweight, a lot more easy to install, a lot more cheaper. Because if you want to make this, oh, that will uh, cost hundreds and hundreds of euros or dollars. If you want to make this, it's a lot cheaper. It's just a few euros it's, uh, or a few dollars. So it's it's not it's not money. It's it's really uh, very cheap. So uh, uh, this is the same ID. You have a wire connected, but you don't need a bolt anymore. You just put it in the in the magnet, and uh, and then you put it north south too. What we have also to understand. This one alone will not work. Like, if you put this alone in the soil, you will not have huge results. You have to connect it with a wire. It's like a radio without the antenna. It's not. It's not useful. Uh, but you need the radio, the electronic circuit in a certain way, and the antenna. The antenna alone, not much uh, use. The radio alone, not much use. You need the, the antenna plus the radio. You see? So the, it's the same with that, with that kind of stuff. You need the radio and the antenna. Only this, not so useful. Only this, not so useful. So it's very interesting. But we will see that also later. So I hope that for first time, it was very interesting. Uh, uh, there is a book in English where they speak a little bit about my work on the influence of music on plants. It's uh, Quantum Leaps in Agriculture. It's from, um, it's from a, a, a Dutch guy uh, from Holland, Hank Kieft. He, he, he made that book. So explore, Exploring Quantum Principles in Farming, Gardening and Nature. Very interesting too. A uh, very modern book uh, uh, about... Uh, different technologies. Um, uh, uh, I advise you also another book where I will talk over the, uh, but uh, for the one that are passionate and that want to read books and, and discover, I will I'll just show you this. It's from Harry Oldfield, Invisible Universe. Harry Oldfield was really uh, a genius really it's it's one of those genius he worked already with crystals and with uh, energies and subtle energies since the 70s um, i met him two times i did some experiments with him uh, uh, we will talk about him too because he he created a device where you can see subtle energies even in a field or around the plant, or in a garden, or around the tower, or a stone. You can see really how the energy flows and uh, how it interacts. Uh, uh, he, he invented like a, a camera and, and uh, programs how to analyze the light and how to see the, the subtle changes in the light and and that can make you it more easy to see those energies. Very interesting. Uh, so and the, the, all that information helps me a lot to understand how it works, and that's why I can explain you all that. So, <clears throat> so I I hope it was interesting for you. Uh, it was for me a pleasure to to for this first life, and um, and uh, so we see us again uh, maybe in one or two weeks. Uh, for sure, I, I promise. Uh, I, I do. We do it again, and we will do. I will do that regularly. Um, uh, if you think about the time frame, that would be better for you. Uh, here, local time, I begin. It was around nine o'clock in the evening. Uh, I don't know where you are in the world or in the U.S. I, I think it's uh, afternoon uh, at your place in the U.S. But uh, um, uh, if it's better. I can also do in the morning, soon in the morning, and then maybe it's done in the evening at your place, or, or maybe I can do uh, in the afternoon and then it's more. Uh, you, you, you tell me, but I think it's a good time frame now for, for everybody, but we, we can see. Um, so um, I just look for a question or two, but. Uh, I guess we will talk about volcanic rocks too, because uh, very interesting also in electroculture. Um, 
Oh, there's so much to, to see. Uh, I, I would like to explain you everything in one evening, but it's not possible. Uh, um, so, uh, energize, say yes. Uh, that, uh, yeah, I will try to, to see all your questions and write them some down so I can respond in the next life to, to them. Um, so thank you very much for for your presence for your participation and uh i wish you all the best bye bye thank you thank you